Road crashes are now becoming a serious cause of concern for the government of the Gambia. Every year, hundreds of people die as a result of road crashes. Thousands more are injured. Many more go to work, schools, markets, farms, health centers, or even parties and never return. Some lose their jobs as a result of injuries sustained from road crashes. There is no doubt that road crashes are imposing serious costs on our economy. It is believed that the economic cost of road crashes in developed in countries like the Gambia is estimated around 2 to 3 percent of our GDP. Going by the GDP of the Gambia, the cost can be estimated around 2 to 3 billion dollars. This does not include the social cost of losing someone very dear to you, the pain, grief, and suffering of loved ones. The social and economic cost of road crashes is very worrying. It is disheartening to learn that most of these deaths, injuries, and economic losses can be prevented in developed countries but could not be prevented in developing countries like ours. The sad news is that in richer countries, the deaths and injuries are slowly decreasing but in the poorer ones, they are increasing rapidly. Victims and survivors are often young, leaving families to cope with the loss of a breadwinner. Not everyone is equally affected by the lack of road safety though. In high-income countries, most victims and survivors are vehicle occupants, while in low-income and middle income like the Gambia, victims are mostly pedestrians and other vulnerable road users who never own a motor vehicle. Cognizant of the magnitude of the problems of road crashes, the government of the Gambia task the Ministry of Transport, Works and Infrastructure to lead the process of improving road safety in close collaboration with all relevant stakeholders in the country. Therefore, all hand should be on deck in our fight to combat the menace the country is facing. The great Nigerian novelist Chinua Achebe writes about the needless horror and death we bring upon ourselves on the road and went on to rightfully ask, how can intelligent beings do this to themselves? It's the prized question multitudes are seeking answers for as road accidents continue to maim, destroy and end millions of lives around the world. In the Gambia, it's mostly due to reckless driving as this police traffic officer, who has spent years on the road, attests to. Every checkpoint and every uh, village, uh, there's a mark whereby the drivers will know the maximum uh, speed that they should run for that area. Because they didn't uh, 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 buy by the uh, rules and the regulations of the Motor Traffic Act. When reaching a village, you know that there are people crossing and uh, animals crossing, both day and night. Because if you check the statistics, too much of road accidents. Because there are drivers who run very fast on the highway. So when approaching a village, you have to reduce your speed. Hundreds of road accidents, deaths and injuries are recorded in the Gambia every year. And the trend has surged to a dangerous high, making the country's highways some of the most volatile in the sub-region. Research has shown that road traffic fatality on our roads in the country is the highest death that we record more than any other disease that we can compare. Day in, day out, people are losing their lives. Gross speeding and blatant rule breaking have become norm of the country's roads, which outline a 500-kilometer network connecting the Gambia's five regional provinces. Let's start in the hinterland where large defeats and supports the cities, foods, needs and holds the bulk of the Gambia's topography. Traversing this space to connect people and business is a central part of the economy and daily life. Commuters who frequent the country's hinterland continue to witness costs of bad and reckless driving, often manifests itself in the deadliest accidents the country has seen. Unsafe driving on largely unregulated and unpoliced roads has always endangered commuters' lives in rural Gambia. Journeying on both the famous Transgambia Highway and its corresponding northern belt towards the Central River region puts one in direct confrontation with the country's pastoral look. You cannot avoid the occasional animal or herd crossing the road and you'll discover journeying inland 
is just as demanding. It could be anything from monkeys to cattle herds in search of water and pasture the drivers are largely aware of but tend to miss in occasional bumps. Livestock and children crossing the roads without thought in the rustic zone is a sure scenario. Passengers are themselves vital watchdogs in ensuring lawful and safe driving. But how much are their concerns really heeded? Why should it be the business of everybody is to make sure that we caution the drivers, particularly when we are in the commercial vehicles. If the drivers are driving over speeding, we should question them. Please reduce your speed. If the particular drivers fail to adhere to what the advice the, um, the person give, he can report that particular driver to the nearest police station. Do drive for a mode of accident? Never. You have accident to do drive for a body. I was involved in an accident when a commercial passenger vehicle I was traveling in crashed into a donkey cart. There were so many fatalities, too hard to come to terms with it. Livestock and animals crossing roads is a red flag for accidents, especially over speeding vehicles. These are rural areas and every turn could lead to a herd or children crossing the road. Drivers using rural roads and highways therefore require utmost levels of caution and vigilance to avoid collision with nature or children. Reckless overspeeding continues to claim the lives of innocent passerby and commuters with the lack of emergency response services in all zones making accidents recipes for massive fatalities. If the accident happens amongst two or three people, we attend to the one that is most important. And when they come, we attend to them most because there was a revised uh, policy that says that if you have an RTA, you can should attend to the individual immediately before even involving the police. We have a lab uh, here where we keep blood. For example, for emergency cases, if, uh, if you know that the person really need blood, even if the relatives are not around, we will definitely give the blood to the individual. But sometimes, if the blood bank is empty and you have an RTA, it becomes an issue. I was in the country of the flood. 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 So, I was in the country of the flood. 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 The trend is producing staggering fatalities. In 2008 alone, 1.3 million people died in road traffic accidents according to a World Organization estimate with children accounting for one in every five fatalities. This is besides the millions of injuries and disabilities maiming lives on the world's roads every day. The trend is particularly endangering young lives. In 2004, road traffic injuries killed more youths between 5 and 14 years than major killer diseases such as HIV, AIDS, and malaria. It affects the young people as well. A lot of the biggest proportion of the ones who are affected are people in their prime of their life, between 10 to about 40. And those are the ones who are the future of this country. So we have to think about how we start addressing it. If I said I am 
traveling from Brigama to Mankamankunda. I would like to reach Mankamankunda life with safety and return back life and safety. So if you have on board a vehicle, knowing the driver, the way and manner that he is driving, is better for the passenger to caution the driver. You cannot be driving whilst you are holding, you are going on speed, holding one steering wheel with another hand and leaving your other hand behind. Or you are driving and smoking. These are all things that we need to catch on them. Some drivers will even smoke and then the danger zones where drivers, where the drivers drive through should be known by passengers and caution the drivers at the time that they are approaching those areas. But for example, the Anman crossing areas, you are driving, you are seeing a bull, you know, I mean school zones, all these areas should be a, a, an area where passengers should be cautioned of and then try to catch on the drivers to reduce their speed when they are approaching those areas. Whilst road traffic accidents are now the leading cause of death in developing countries, the epidemic is fast spreading into underdeveloped nations. In the Gambia, road accidents account for the highest fatalities seen in all spheres with a surging rise in threatening injuries and disabilities. If you look at only this year, what we have registered, if you look at how many people lose their life, how many are left, you know, um, without their legs or their foot or whatever, it's too much. And I think we need to change our attitude. Let them be careful when they are driving. People are not equal. Some people, when they are walking on the street, they are depressed and having some psych uh, social issue at home. So when they are on the highway, they, maybe they are not uh, concerned or vigilant, you know, with the vehicles. I think the drivers also should play a very vital role in reducing speed. And also, if you know that you are passing by a place that is so crowded, always make sure that you, 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 you turn down your speed. Slow down so that um, people you not accidentally meet with a child or someone and then cause accident. I think uh, also the, the police also should play a very vital role in making, making sure that uh, uh, nobody will drive a vehicle without a valid lancing. The passengers inside the vehicle, I think first of all, they should count on themselves. When you are inside the vehicle and you see that the, you know, the driver is running on high speed, you are approaching a, a bend or you are approaching a, a, a sloopy place or maybe during the time of the rain season, you should cause on the driver. Tell him to limit his speed. But if you just keep quiet, when there is any uh, emergency or accident, mostly the vulnerable people you know, are the passengers because many of the accident, the drivers are always on the safe side. So the people who are already, you know, are, are involved in the accident or being injured or, you know, being fatal is the, 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 the passengers. So the passengers, you know, should help the police. One thing about, you know, road safety in the Gambia is like people think it's the responsibility of, you know, only the government. But it's a collective, you know, responsibility. It's your responsibility, it's my responsibility. And then the imam out there is his, you know, responsibility to ensure that everybody is safe. So that's why you know we need to build you know the, the actors you know within the government as well as you know the communities because for example if someone dies you know around you know for you you know you will not be there I will not be there but you know it's the community people there who will be there so we need to build the capacities of those people so that you know they can handle you know this road accident like any other activity driving is governed by rules and the Gambia has a raft of regulatory frameworks and laws that come directly from its colonial influence. Since independence, it has maintained an orderly process to ensure effective transportation and driving across its provinces until recent when a meltdown in traffic rules met a surging embrace of dangerous motoring. The result, more cars and less qualified drivers, chaotic traffic activity, and ever depleting road safety levels, making many areas elusive death traps. We are facing a growing problem. And the reason being that one, we are having more and more vehicles, we are building more and more roads, and we are also urbanizing. And there's a lot of urbanization going on. And that is uh, the reason, or the reasons behind it. And government is fully aware, and in particular this ministry, um, 
uh, or around 2017, when we were aware of this trend, it coincided with the time when we were drafting uh, a national transport policy, which will be covering from 2018 to almost 2027. It's a 10 year period policy. For traffic officers and police, all that is required to ensure road safety is adhere to basic rules designed to facilitate safe driving. Good driving along regulations is a lifesaver during the most pressing moments. Driving a motor vehicle or a motorbike, you have to be very careful on the road. You have to, you know, run very steadily. Don't run very fast. You have to be careful. Look at the people on the road. Save their lives. It's very important. This is not only the innocent passengers. Even the driver himself, his life is at stake of that regular driving. Especially, you know, most of the time we call, you know, um, careless driving. We start with that, our careless driving. The life you save, it could be yours. Because if you recklessly drive and then you cause an accident, uh, the next victim is you. Who knows? So that's why if the driver don't care, the passenger on board they should care of their life. By telling the driver, stop oh, what you are doing. Drive carefully and then, you know, the, the life you save, it could be yours. It's even on the cover of the insurance. Essentially, to begin with, since they were constructing this road, this is a six meter road, which is very poor. A six meter road with people using this road. There are too many people using this road on a daily basis. So look at how narrow the road is. Even one truck can even fill up the road and then there would be no other vehicle that can pass, which is making life very terrible for Basi citizens, for the citizenry of Basi. It should have been wider than this, at least 15 meters. But terribly enough, they never did so. They just constructed it to that level six meter road, very narrow. Thereby making a lot of, causing a lot of accidents, unnecessary accidents. And this road is used by a lot of people. The donkey carts use the same road, motorbike schools, I mean, tractors, vehicles, 20 ton lorries, which is too much for this road. And it's very narrow. Come in slow, yake one way traffic. Come slow, yinka block le. But on signs, but the cycle local calls are crossing town la. Sare tiolo yaje. So motor fan and dolbe je. Kabori doman doman dol fan e ka high speed ke. Paya lo silo kang come silo be doyari nyami. Come imaje deno lo katambi silo kang. Nika na high speed ibe problem o shuttle le. A driver, first of all, you know, before the police issue him with a lunching, he's been tested. I mean, you go by the um, the protocols, you know, you go for testing. If you are qualified and then by your age, they're launching you according to your age. And then, but nowadays, what we realize, you know, definitely things are not normal. You know, you'll be sitting at home and then you, they bring you a lunch and drive a lunch, which I think is very, very wrong. It's not police ethics. It's not police ethics. Definitely, what we found in the system, the driver, if you feel that now I'm qualified, I can drive, you go for testing and then you go with your you know um um the testing uh for that we call learners launching if you have up to three and then you are entitled to have sometimes you will appear before the testing officer he will look at you and then say go till next year because the way your appearance is and he can judge you definitely he will ask you to go till next year but those days are not in system now some of the ongoing reforms um in particular for example, is the police uh, uh, traffic management uh, responsibilities. Uh, to the extent that until now, the registration and the licensing is still not quite automated or digitalized. Um, it, is, it, 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 it slows down uh, in terms of recovery of stolen vehicles or identification of crime or serving of notice and, 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 and even prosecution. So um, digitalization um, of, of, of traffic management is one aspect that we are embarked on and, and, and introducing uh, in a very significant way a reform. Now in terms of vehicle testing, we are also introducing a reform there. At the moment, the testing is limited. It's also just physical inspection. But we are going to broaden that to introduce standard MOT testing centers 
to be able to enhance um, uh, safety condition of the, uh, the vehicle in terms of root, root worthiness. The roots guide us. As I said, dangerous driving, reckless driving, careless driving, over speeding, neglect of signboards. These are all laws that are stated there. So and then they are all punishable by the law. So these are the laws are there. It is just that people don't care about the law. People don't observe those laws. Road users and community members have also a major role in enhancing road safety by reining in on bad driving in their communities. A temporal solution has been the creation of road homes to minimize overspeeding in residential zones. The police traffic that are responsible for ensuring that road safety is, is accorded by the drivers and is respected, the passengers as well have a stake in this because it is passengers that the commercial drivers and the motorists are, are carrying. If they are over speeding, they know better before they reach out to the police checkpoints. So I am here informing all the passengers that use commerce, both commercial and private vehicles to ensure that the drivers that are carrying them conform with road safety. It is stated in the law, residential areas you should not drive more than 25 kilometers per hour. So if you are approaching a village, for example, uh, driving from, 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 from Banjun, going up to, up to anywhere, there's no need for a driver to go on a high speed. The lack of speed limits and strict enforcement is a problem. The rise in needless deaths and injuries has inspired more community action and vigilance to boost road safety. But this effort is particularly crucial in zones attracting young people such as schools, markets, playgrounds and inner city communities where minors also commune. Zebra crossings established in some of these zones have been useful in reducing accidents, but levels of traffic rule violation shows drivers largely disregard such safety measures during overspeeding. It has also become essential to train and orient children in traffic navigation across the city and many believe introducing students to road safety awareness in schools alongside the establishment of more recognizable traffic signs can help to bring much needed change. Recently we have embarked on, you know, uh, uh, measures on the physical measures on the road to reduce speed. Well, when we build roads again, we put signs uh, to guide drivers as to what speed they should be plying at. But uh, the question is how many of our drivers do re look at this and respect them? Uh, it's very few. Uh, we are all drivers at one stage and really uh, this is a challenge that we need to address. So recently to be able to cope this accidents, the menace caused by overspeeding, we are now introducing speed homes in critical areas. Uh, critical areas in the sense I mean school zones, uh, where we have hospitals, where we have markets, and where we have, uh, you know, mosques, and where people normally cross the road uh, uh, frequently. Uh, so, so that, of course, drivers will be forced to. This is supposed not to be the case, because a driver should not be forced to stop the car. Uh, once, of course, they should have been observing the speed signs. Uh, so we put homes to make sure they slow down and, you know, to allow people to cross. And we have also introduced zebra crossings at most of these locations, again, to, uh, to facilitate the movement of people, you know, over some of our road uh, uh, roads in, uh, you know, in, in, in most parts of the country. The road accident epidemic has made access to hospitals and Medicare more critical with doctors receiving more injury cases needing surgery and emergency treatment. How often do traffic accidents surface in hospital cases? Road traffic accidents are very frequent. They are actually more frequent than people know. In this hospital alone, we tend to receive at least two to three minimum a day. On a monthly basis, we are easily getting up to 100, sometimes up to almost 140 in a month, depending on the month. Most victims in the city and major towns are able to access critical and immediate care after accidents, but a massive portion of the country still lies outside these comfort zones, 
making emergency access a challenging across several clusters. I think one of the one of the biggest barriers we have to adequately treating these patients is the lack of immediate care in terms of the emergency response. When they arrive at the hospital, they can get almost immediate care, but the delay often is to get here. This is the only hospital in the country that treats fully treats patients who have trauma from road traffic accidents. So if you would have an accident anywhere else in the country, you end up going to the closest hospital there and then being transferred here, which can take hours, sometimes even the next day. That's, that's definitely an issue. We have almost anarchy on our roads. The regulation is not very strict and the enforcement too is not very strict. I mean, you can park anywhere you want, you can drive at any speed you want, you can pick up and drop passengers anyhow you like, especially given these commercial vehicles. Um, and really, there is a lot of chaos that is going on. Um, and we think that the management of traffic, I mean, the man we have to improve our management of the traffic. We should have better road signs, uh, also better structures to protect pedestrians. The lack of blood to administer emergency life support and surgery is another recurring problem that has caused so many traffic deaths. There are no special provisions, unfortunately. Special blood provision for victims involved in accidents is an urgent need across hospitals, but shortages and a global pandemic make that a challenge in most clinics. Having a, a reasonable blood bank, as you call it, relies on people donating. I think one of the biggest problems we have is the reticence of people to want to donate blood. Because the blood, you can't buy it, it's not made, it has to come from people. So people need to regularly donate blood. If we were regularly, everybody was regularly donating blood, then the blood bank would have blood and anyone who comes needing a particular type of blood, it would be very easy to get it. But often when they come, there's no blood stored and you have to try and get it from family members or we take from another patient, unfortunately, and have to replace it later. Voluntarily, we'll go to our communities to see how best we'll have best blood. But sometimes it's very uh, difficult because it's very, blood is very demanding all the time. As you said, most of those accident victims may need blood. And it's not only about accident victims. We talk about mothers and their reproductive rights. Huh? Anytime somebody might need, uh, somebody might go for labor here and there, or anytime somebody is referred with ups and gyne, uh, conditions, most of the time they will need blood. So blood becomes a very specious uh, commodity that I think as a country we should come together and everybody become a blood donor. Because if you look at the hospital, almost everybody is a donor, whether you are uh, a, 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 a staff or non-staff here and there. So, But blood, as I said, is definitely very challenging for us. With more people dying from road accidents than any other health conditions like AIDS and tuberculosis, road accidents have become an epidemic that frequent drivers and road users need to be wary of at all times. We call it a silent epidemic because people ignore it, but it's a very big problem. If you look at the things that people have focused on in the last one year in Gambia, COVID, road traffic accidents has, have had more deaths than COVID. Maternal mortality again catches a lot of attention in the media, road traffic accidents far more than COVID, uh, far more than um, maternal mortality. So it's a big problem and we have to start addressing it like such. You see the way people respond when we talk about COVID, we talk about maternal mortality, we talk about HIV AIDS. We need that kind of response for people when we talk about road traffic accidents and injuries. The risk of dangerous driving always is about fatality. You either have a bus tired, you somersaulted and you die there or you go and kill an animal or you call human being. So these are the dangers among them. And neglect of traffic signboards, like the zebra crossing, the speed bump and then, and then, and then, and then where it is stated you should not drive more than 25 kilometers per hour. For victims recovering from road accidents, healing and full recovery can be excruciatingly difficult and whilst many successfully recover from injuries, others ultimately suffer the pain for the rest of their lives. With many accident victims facing the long-term effects of accidents, there is a growing need to create mechanisms for psychological support to assist people living through post-accident trauma.
another loss from traffic accidents is lack of a national compensation and adequate insurance coverage to support victims through their recovery period which generally demands a break from work and daily activities. These phases could be overly difficult for people without adequate domestic and social support. Without laws granting adequate protection for accident victims and people involved in road accidents, the impact of traffic rule violations and reckless driving will continually remain unaddressed. Everybody is concerned because everybody uses the road. You have to move from point A to point B at some time, whether on foot, on bicycle, or you know, or in a taxi or your private vehicle. So everybody more or less is concerned. But as you said, there are key institutions that are more concerned, like the uh, police, you know, um, like uh, NRA, like, uh, you know, education. Uh, you know, there are a number of schools, you know, along the roads, and we have to protect the kids, you know. So there should be some kind of education at every school to inform kids about how to use the roads, how to cross them. So really everybody is concerned about, about road safety. Based on the statistics out there, it's not you know, looking well. We are ranked in our fourth. So it's not definitely looking good. As you know, not just the number, because if you look at the, the population you know, per se. For example, the rate of you know, you know, fatalities for road accidents, you look at, you know, the deaths, you know, by 100,000 population. So, for example, if Gambia, we are recording 150, and Nigeria with 80 million population, and they are recording even 2,000, ours, you know, is, you know, uh, more critical. For this, we need all hands on deck. As the saying goes, road safety is everybody's business. It is not just NRA providing road infrastructure. It is not only the police, of course, uh, responsible for, uh, of course, uh, um, of course, monitoring our traffic, and uh, it's everybody's business. As we said, and we will keep saying, road safety should start from school levels. It should be road safety principles should be incorporated in our school curriculum, so that. Uh, children will grow up with ideas. By the time they become mature people and start driving, the idea would have already been there. So um, it is a multi-sectoral approach that is needed to be able to solve, to, to, to save, to solve road safety issues in a particular country. Reckless overspeeding and bad driving need stronger and uncompromising punishment by law to serve as a deterrent for drivers. The law currently involves this approach, but authorities agree that lax regulations and the absence of stringent measures for rule breaking is compromising existing laws and traffic policies. Road safety is of concern, is of national concern, and it's not going to go away, and it's not going to reduce. In fact, it's going to increase because we are building more roads, building more bridges, you know, so through our villages, through our towns. So road safety is a growing concern and it affects everybody. So everybody should be aware of the initiatives being taken and what they can do to help themselves and to help members of the community. The main objective of road safety is to um, eliminate or reduce fatality on our roads. And that presupposes that so many players and actors are involved here. Um, and what is common among all those actors is behavioral change. Um, police have to be, to be much more professional and that requires training. The people have to be much more responsible and that requires sensitization. Policy makers have to be much more sympathetic and, 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 and sensitive to um, uh, policies that are also affecting um, a pedestrians. And even when accidents do ha happen, uh, what are the policy uh, in terms of supporting accident victims? Uh, those are all uh, important um, uh, dimensions that one has to look at 
and consider as we um, address the uh, issue of road safety. Another strategy to enhance safety and driving standard is to boost road infrastructure. Our focus goes on uh, where our roads are paved and, you know, engineered, uh, because that is where vehicles speed. That is where they speed up. You know, if you look at our records, uh, the speeding is not on feeder roads, it's not on rural roads, it's more on paved roads. So this is where our focus goes. So we, the challenges we have here is we want to expand our road network as we are doing. You've heard of the OIC. We are dualizing some of our major roads and we are building 50 kilometers of rural roads. This is a challenge because we should be prepared both practically, physically and of course mentally to see how best. Because the more you expand, your network, the more problems you have, the more challenges you have in terms of safety. If you're looking at maybe 20 kilometers of road, now you're thinking of 100 and, you know, a thousand kilometers, then the progress, the, the, the problem multiplies. The working group, they are more technical. They have been looking at, you know, the issues that concern road safety. You know, like uh, the type of vehicles that are on the road, whether they are, whether they are road water or not. They are looking at uh, the way that people are being given license to drive. They are looking at the way vehicles are parking on our roads and some of them are derelict vehicles and how to, you know, uh, alleviate that issue or that problem. In other words, all the factors that may cause constraints on our roads or can cause accidents. We are looking at in a holistic way. Through these I mean, uh, groups and coming together and discussing things in a holistic manner, each it bringing its, its own perspective. The city is a raging spectacle of motoring. Cars and motor bicycles using every opportunity to race and best each other with a notable absence of road signs and stringent regulations promoting reckless driving. Officials liken it to anarchy and agree urgent steps are needed to make regulation and enforcement of traffic rules more efficient. We need to track you know, the, 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 the progress you know, that we are making. For example, we will come up you know, with interventions, but how would you know whether the intervention that you are coming up you know, is the right one. We need to track the progress you know, that we are making. So that's why you know, the, the, the documents you know, look at you know, eight you know, strategic you know, areas. The first one look at you know, leadership and, 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 and coordination. And the second one, the capacity you know, building. And then you have the safety lead you know, regulatory reform, enforcement, and uh, yeah, a a a enforcement and then you know speed you know management. All these are strategic you know directions you know that we believe you know if they are effectively implemented you know we will be able to improve our road safety situation in the country. A collaborative and multi-sectoral approach is a great strategy to reduce traffic incidents and road safety. But how far are authorities prepared? to go in strengthening regulations. Resources will never be adequate, but one has to be innovative to be able to deal with this matter. Uh, but road safety uh, resources is not small in this country, if you look at the, 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 the total envelope. Uh, but you cannot find them in any particular insti uh, institution and institutional budget and say this is the program for road safety. What this means is that our individual institution have integrated road safety programs. For example, Ministry of Health, um, they deal with the health centers, they deal with the emergency services, they deal with the hospitals. Those are all, all part and parcel of road safety. You look at Ministry of Transport, in terms of road safety uh, measures and in terms of road safety features, designing of roads, is an integral, integral part of the program for road safety. So, and I can go on and on. These individual components, if they are pulled together and coordinated, then it becomes huge. 
and the resources are part and parcel of the individual institution budget. This is how one way uh, to finance it locally. But at the same time, we do also um, uh, do write-up for, for, for proposals and approach partner donors, be it the, 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 the Rosewater Trust Fund under the UN agencies or other bilateral uh, entities who might be interested in road safety in the Gambia. And yes, they are interested and they are participating. Our UN sister institutions such as WHO are quite interested and they are supporting uh, the road safety program and activities in this country. New policies must factor both road user behavior and safe practice model covering road systems, infrastructure and regulations covering speed limits, drink driving, motorcycle helmets, seat belts, mobile phone use and child restraints to protect minors. The increase in the number of cars has necessitated the need for more road infrastructure as per the global metric for road safety to maintain standards. Before road safety can be um, satisfactorily implemented, you need to have an agency, an independent agency responsible for this. The coordination, of course, they would alongside coordinate with the road authorities and of course with the police, you know, to make sure law and order pertains on our roads. But then the coordination should be centralized at a level where uh, 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 the responsibility would become theirs. The government has adopted a more responsive approach to boosting road safety with new policing programs, making testing compulsory for new drivers and revised categories to ensure effective licensing of commercial vehicles and trucks. Whatever the challenge ahead, road safety rules and traffic regulations are still existing as provided by law and everyone agrees that fully observing them is the surest and only way to safety.